Um, my name is Dita Riyatima and I am General Secretary of two organizations. Hello, do I have your attention? And uh, the first organization is the Baltic Sea Region Radioactivity Watch and the other one is Baltic Sea Regional European Committee on Radiation Risk, which is even Chris representative of and Pai. And uh, we are the ECRR unit I work with, we are working hard to put together scientific projects in the Baltic Sea region. But unfortunately, money is very hard to find. So the, the, this is a very provocative part of this day. And it's called Nuclear Colonization of the Baltic Sea region by the global military industry, where Sweden is a key player. Uh, we do not have the lot of data about <coughs> these military uh, organizations uh, and the factories that produce military uh, weapons in Sweden, which are plenty and many, as Sweden is per capita the biggest weapon pr producer in the world. And this is very important to see how these things uh, play in as uh, we have this, as I call, feudal economic system still, where the pyramid is the structure. And I will be suggesting that we will have to change this pyramid into natural sun system structure where the most competent object enlightens the whole universe of living beings. And this is the wonderful, beautiful region. We have had this wonderful Baltic Sea region for thousands of years, ecological, nourishing, loving, caring, giving, welfare and uh, ecological foods and shelter to our predecessors. And the last 50 years have been a dramatical shift in the region as our beloved sea has become the most radioactive sea in the world. Which is, uh, <clears throat> until now, we, we do not have an idea how we could reverse it. And there is no science in the area either. I will be discussing the subject that we do not have science yet. As in feudal system of pyramid, where people have to depend on money, uh, where they don't have independent income, that is attached to their being independently, then they have to follow the money stream which is granted by the tops of the pyramid. And then there is no science because scientists become to um, <coughs> corporate lobby technical staff. So they are not scientists, they are corporate lobby technical staff. So to, be, to create science we need independent people, free people. And for that, we need a shift from pyramidal to sound structure system. We have uh, put out together uh, yesterday, sitting in the press conference, the, the people from the Baltic Tea Tour, we have sit together and decided to have a press release in these subjects that you have been got a paper on. So we demand <coughs> to start a process of action through courts in an affected countries uh, where and the Swedish parliament decision of 17th June this year has to be declared illegal. The organization behind the nuclear Baltic Sea Tour are declaring this decision. And uh, this is because the Swedish MEPs had no mandate from the people to make such a decision and the recent elections in Sweden avoided the nuclear power questions. And in the 25 years of operation of these plans, the aggregated releases have exceeded the quantity of radioactivity releases by the Chernobyl accident. And the radioactive contamination of the Baltic Sea is now astonishingly high and is causing extreme health problems in coastal populations. 
and the courts have to be engaged in this question as well. I will come back to uh, and finish up our press release points soon, and I, I would like to show, remind you to, to put in mind this website bsrrw.org, as we have enormous amount of information on it. What I wanted to show you how to use it, it's a bit con confusing. These are the countries, 10 countries. We will be adding there even Iceland and even Belarus. But here you can see last updated pages because the frame of the website is enormous. But the last updated pages, they, some of this frame is still empty because we know it's enormous field. Yeah, We have started to fill this only eight months ago. But here in last updated pages, you can find a list that are filled pages. So you go to last updated pages and then you click on those. And here is a magazine in PDF. Uh, click on it and you can send it further to your friends. So, and the, and the other, furthermore, the atomic industry has made Sweden poor, as Orke Sundström and Professor Georgi Fjodorovic Lepin have told, been describing today. And up to the end of the millennium, as astonishing, to, oh, 300 billion Swedish crowns of losses have been put. Billion. 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 billion, that is milliarder, uh, mil mil yeah have been put into the black hole that is the nuclear industry. And uh, last but not the least, Swedish expert Gabo Tirolo, who was with us yesterday, revealed that Sweden has now become subordinate to the United States in many areas involving, involving nuclear pollution and the undemocratic decisions taken to permit the bombing by US and NATO forces in Norrbotten in Sweden this summer and previous summer is an unprecedented and astonishing event. The United States have refused to deny that they will be testing new weapon systems containing the radioactive substance of the big uranium. So we don't know what they're doing. We can't get to know. There is no legal system that functions. This is just a reminder of the Helsinki Commission has declared Baltic Sea as the most radioactive sea in the world. And the, these are the, the amounts of cesium-137. <laughs> these are amounts of plutonium. Plutonium. It didn't exist uh, before atomic industry started. It didn't exist on the face of the Earth. And these are the current uh, atomic industrial facilities. I just wanted to put in now, which maybe I will forget later, that even in Latvia, where I come from, uh, it is not an official statement, but I have geologists who are doing expertise on River Daugava, the mother river of our nation, Latvians, where they are planning, uh, testing how the Latvian atomic industry plant could see. So they are not only in Tallinn and Lithuania, they're where they want to replace the old station with a new one. They are also working, they have money, they have money working on, on uh, checking out how Latvian atomic power plant would see. And we have to really, really have in mind military industry where Sweden is the key player in the world. And Roland will tell more about that. And about these streams of air that surround the world, where uh, different particles follow with the air, they follow with the wind, with the rain, come down, and nobody is, is sheltered. So that is why I think we will win this game. We will, because even the people in the tops of the pyramid get sick, their children, uh, are affected, their relatives are affected, and we just have to go and talk to Council of Foreign Relations, to Bilderberg Group, and others and others, who we know will love to meet us, I'm sure. We, I just don't think that MPs of uh, our local nations have so much influence anymore, 
because we have this global new world order. I just wanted to remind you of this too, because look how, how the body of Russia looks. These are only the underground nuclear tests. This is uh, a borrowed digital seismograph archive underground nuclear tests uh, during six, 1966 to 1996. Yeah? You, can you will find all the, <coughs> all the PowerPoint presentations that we have today on our website in a day or two. And you can check them later. But the most important question is about potential legal at atomic disaster sources. And the legal, that all this system that is destroying the planet is legal, it is endorsed on us through legal systems, which are told to be democratic, but that is a total fraud, as we have heard today. So, if we talk about experimental final nuclear repositories being built in Foschmark's region, in the of Finland, then <coughs> it is very nice to even to see this, this plan. You know, it's very important just to, just to have this view and realize that this is only for 6,000 capsules. And how many are, are really planned to be there, we don't know. This is the first sketch of Swedish waste, we don't know. This is the, the Finland plan, which has already been made bigger. From, from, from the beginning it was only one part of it that they said they would build, but then it suddenly, the previous summer, they said, oh, but we will extend it for that and that, and it will be extending and extending, there is no question. And as uh, Niklas Nedzaksemerna has shown, there are so many ways how the waste will get out into the sea. But the main peculiar thing that maybe nobody has mentioned today, what I have noticed, is that the detonating explosives and the radioactive wastes are planned to be brought down at the same time, not at the same town, but at the same time, in the repository building process. So, if you check how they're planning to do it, they will be bringing it at the same time. And why? Because, of course, they can't make all these tunnels first, and then start putting in uh, nuclear waste. They will be blow up these tunnels in one corner, and then they'll start putting in the waste. But they will still be blowing up the other the other structures. So the the, the dynamites and whatever explosives they will use, they will be going down in the lorries. Maybe even the same. I don't know. <laughs> I hope probably not. But the plan is absolutely unbelievable. So, uh, <coughs> these explosions that can appear around these <coughs> places are very, very dangerous. And here, is, here are the links to the background material for the Baltic countries that are suggested by the SDB. You will be able to click on them in these presentations so that you can see what uh, the professional organization is made, making uh, possible for the Baltic Sea region organizations, how they can in engage in the process. Uh, the tragical thing here is that many countries do not engage. For example, Latvia, where I come from, has said that uh, they have <coughs> taken the status of not engaged country uh, from the project. So, not affected country. The country not affected by the nuclear waste repository project. Isn't that interesting? How, uh, so, so it's very unprofessional. And uh, so this was a very, very black joke event we had now on 6th of February in the spring, where we went to the Forschmark and to see the preliminary report. Uh, how do you call it in English? Uh, environmental impact assessment. Preliminary environmental impact assessment, and uh, they are closing this. This uh, the people cannot put input anymore because uh, after the preliminary, where no uh, risks of radioactive substances were shown, they closed the possibility for the society to engage in the process. And there is another very important uh, uh, project that they are building in our region. And that is in Lund, Sweden, European Spallation Source is being built. It will look like this. 
if it's uh, if it's done, and it is a very interesting structure. Uh, why I want to mention it here, it, it is called like sort of a research facility for some neutrons, uh, neutron <coughs> cannon, but. Uh, these are the official sort of um, descriptions of it, and they are also financed by the, such countries as Latvia, who is broke, where half of the population has left the country because they don't have food, they have, don't have jobs, but even ESS is being sponsored by Latvia, so it's unbelievable situations. But the interesting point here is, that the region is being very professionally activized in neutron sciences. So, and uh, the proton accelerator, like ESS that is planned to be built there, is only one ingredient of three that are necessary for the nuclear industry dream of the waste transmutation system to become reality. So, uh, so they say that this is for science ESS and just just such a nice, cute project, research project. But if they put to that project a burner reactor and a processing plant, then the future transportation of the nuclear waste can become reality. So, so this region of ours, the Baltic Sea region. It seems to be by by the big industry of the global forces to be planned to become the nuclear <coughs> waste um, transmutation and uh, uh, repository uh, cemetery. And this is nothing we have been informed of. These are the hidden processes, the hidden plans, and we have to become wiser and start to, to look at the whole picture of the plans. <clears throat> yeah. So the legal aspects, ESPO Convention and SEA Protocol, Eurotom and Lisbon Treaties. ESPO Convention gives, the, gives every country around the Baltic Sea region to oppose. Each country around the Baltic Sea can stop the nuclear industrial project, theoretically. But nobody has been trying to do it. <clears throat> Euratom Aims. The tasks of Euratom community is a very creepy, creepy legislation. Actually, it is above the European Union Parliament, as uh, <coughs> the tasks of the Euratom community are promoting nuclear research in member states, facilitating, facilitating investments necessary for development of nuclear energy, exercising the right to ownership of nuclear materials, and it is a very independent piece of law which is independent to the Lisbon Treaty. It is a 50-year-old unmodified version. And the other part there is, Article 3 of Eurotom says, the tasks entrusted to Eurotom community shall be carried out by the European Parliament, Council, <coughs> Commission, Court of Justice, Court of Auditors. So all these institutions have the task to promote, support and favour nuclear power above, above other energy types and there are enormous resources for that. And Brussels has, uh, very interestingly, also a nuclear power plant and atomium is the symbol of the European Union. And behind that is <coughs> Coal and Steel Union that was signed 9th of May 1950. The Paris Declaration where structures in France, Western uh, <coughs> Germany, Italy, the three Benelux uh, countries, Belgium, Luxembourg and Netherlands, signed the pact that transformed our lives forever. And most importantly even is the, the, this legal aspect of Bretton Woods that started in 1944, where our, our currencies that are the very fine instruments, the basic instruments of our economy, they are tied to these laws and we don't have independent economies by that. <clears throat> but the next level, where we stop the feudal society of 6,000 years, what is that? Very interestingly, Mr. Rabbit, Rabbit, 
there we have one wonderful soul who has come from, uh, from New Zealand, all the way from New Zealand. Uh, could you say your name? It's silly to say rabbit all the time. Okay, you, it, it's quite correct then. Uh, you will come to the discussion later, maybe not right now, but, but, but I just was so happy to hear that this is the man also um, working with a resource-based economy, a resource-based economy that comes after this system that we have now, which is ecological, economical and social welfare, where guarantees cover basic needs with resources for each living system, only if we get out of the current feudal economical system of pyramid. And there are all these countries where this structure is starting to be put into place. This is no utopia. This, there is a very professional team behind these ideas. And the welfare of the world is moved out by the pyramidal structures, legalized catastrophes in all social areas. It is very sad and we have to get rid of it because no class in this pyramid is protected from the legal atomic catastrophe sources that are destroying the planet. So, so this competence as a hurricane sun with a, with a developable, developable geographical competence map. I have worked with this uh, uh, in the Stockholm University economy faculty. My master's degree is written uh, about this subject and you can check it on gendereconomy.com or data.no. They all open the same. And this, there I developed one, only one ray of light of competence, of one duality. But if you create a sum, a whole sum of geographical competence system, and the lightest objects start to, to enlighten the systems, then we can get to another level of economical shift. And these are just some um, moments of that. And that's it. Thanks for your attention. I thought you said you were a doctor, not a nuclear no, physicist. Oh, I'm a doctor. No, this guy. 
because he was doing all these statistical things. Very nice. Oh, I said that not. To meet people who believe what the nuclear industry says they are doing, but uh, we have other opinions, and we have, we need the whole picture of opinions, and we have to be prepared to every each of the possibilities, the potential plans that could be there. We have to be prepared for all of them. Not only this naive, beautiful picture. That's what they told my nation in 1990s. You are free now. Ha ha. Half of the population is out in the slave camps of the world. Would it be rude well, to... Are you ready? Oh, no. Well, it, 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 you came the wrong document. Um, anyway, I can't start talking here. That um, I... I have uh, fought uh, radiation since I was 16 years old. I